Okay, now that we've finished the fuselage, it's time to concentrate on the wings. And the best possible place to start for the wings is to go to top view here and load up the image for top. Uh, yeah, there we go. Now I can make the whole wing just by visual cues. There are faster ways to do it, but I will show you the long way simply because the faster ways require extensive knowledge of other programs, which I don't want to get into right now. If you want to, you can actually look up, there's a tutorial on the xplane.org on how one of the guys that does a lot of planes for the xplane.org uh, published a method on how to do it quickly. I adapted that method to my own preference by using Blender as the application to, to calculate all the wing surface areas and stuff. Now, why is it necessary to look for an external application to do this? I'll explain to you why. If you go to wings, um, it's a very easy concept the way it works. Here you can adjust the semi-length of the wing. So if I say, for example, I want a, a wing that's 10 feet wingspan, uh, 10 foot cord and a 10 foot, or sorry, 10 foot root cord and 10 foot tip cord, I'll get a nice little square like this. So far it's nice, fine and dandy. If I want to increase the span, I just increase that number and you'll see here now that airplane has wings that are that are 30 feet wide. Now I can even taper off the wings to become uh, narrower at the end. But the difficulty lies in actually, once you start sweeping the wing, um, you get the problem that, well, along which, where is it calculated that the wingspan is now uh, 30 feet or 30 times 2 in this case because it's on either side you have 30 feet. Well, the way X-Plane calculates this stuff is the semi-length, meaning half the, the wingspan, root to tip, root to tip, along the 25% cord. It's not the actual wingspan, it's the length from this point of the wing till that point of the wing, which is the 25% cord. It's not calculated along the half, it's calculated along the quarter uh, from, the, from the front edge. So this is what makes it a little bit more complicated and it's actually, to be quite honest, a lot of guesswork to get the wings right if you want to do it just with X-Plane without the help of an external program or without having calculated the numbers beforehand. Now, um, you can always hit spacebar to make it transparent. It's pretty obvious to me that the best possible approach would be to create one set of wings here and then append another set of wings for the tip and maybe another set of wings for the very tip. Uh, so let's go back to top view and start by doing that. We'll have one wing that we can move forward and backwards. I'm going to tweak that later on, but I'm going to make it 10 uh, feet wide for now. And I'm going to push it out laterally because actually there is no lift happening in the middle where the fuselage is occupying the space. So I want the lift to start happening uh, here on the outside of the fuselage. Now I can see, all right, I got to move it forward a little bit. I got to increase the root and the tip cords. Okay, let's try this. Let's go like that. Push it forward a little more. I'm gonna pull it in a little. It's too far out. Pull it down a little bit too. All right, let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I want. So now let's move on to the outer wing. Next wing, wing number two. Semi length will be 20. I'll have to push it out laterally by a little more than that. Okay, so it's the tip cord. Let's try four and do the sweep again. It's the same angle as the other one was. Be a little smaller too. All right, let's compare that. All right, we're getting there, yeah. I'm gonna push it forward just a tiny bit. Now we can move on to the third wing, the little tip there. Mm, it's a very tiny one. The root cord will be around four again. Actually, I can always tell if this one was 3.8 then the root cord of the next one will be 3.8 and the tip cord will be pretty close to that because it's not not too far beside and then I want to keep the uh, the sweep at the same angle or pretty much the same angle and I'll worry about the dihedral a little bit later so we have to move this back a little further and 
lots of number punching here. It's just not a it's a little bit of a tedious process, but it pays off when you see it actually fly in the sim. So all right, let's see how this oh, almost perfect, almost a perfect match. Now let's switch to front view and line the plane up vertically. We'll take a front view image of the ERJ. Okay. Start with wing number one. Okay, looks about right. This one will have less dihedral. Maybe like that. And wing number three, probably the same one as the other one. Now we have to move it down to match the. Okay, that looks better. Let's try the side view again. See, we, we see here also that the airfoil doesn't match up, but in this iteration of the plane, I'm not even going to worry about the airfoil. It's going to fly with this airfoil, and it's just maybe not going to fly exactly like the, the original Embraer is going to fly, because I looked up the airfoil, and it's actually a, a proprietary airfoil that they created, so it's actually really hard to get your hands on the, the data that they used to, to create it. Okay, so now we have the main wings, and I'm going to try to continue on with the plane so that we can get it into the simulator and flying as fast as possible. So some aesthetic stuff like this big uh, bulge at the bottom of the body here, I'm not going to worry about it for right now. So let's go on to the horizontal stabilizer, which is also in the wings panel. It's up here. And I know that it's a high T, so it's going to be pretty high up there, maybe 30, 40 feet. Uh, maybe 38 feet. And we'll sweep it a little too, about 20. And we'll go root chord, probably about seven. Tip chord, maybe five. And the vertical arm is going to be, yeah, maybe around there. So let's see how that looks on this thing. Mm, pretty darn close. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, I always make sure that you're zoomed in correctly because these, the all the dimensions, uh, they depend on the zoom level. So. If you're not zoomed in correctly, then you'll run into all sorts of difficulties. Okay, that's pretty close already. Need to make it a little longer. Need to make the tip a little narrower. Sweep it a little less. And give it a bit of negative dihedral. Probably not even one degree. And then uh, push it a little further back. And a little further to the top. Okay, that's pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty close. Now we can move on to the vertical stabilizer now. There's actually two vertical stabilizers you see here. One would be to take up this shape, and the other one would take up this shape right here. So right now I'm only going to do the main one and leave the second one for later because I want to get this plane in the air as soon as possible. So I'll leave out the first one. We know from the other one that it was like about uh, 12 feet high. and or maybe because of the sweep, we need to do it a little more. Give it some sweep. Punch in a. Oh, no, we don't need that much. And push it back. Actually, we've got to push it up a little too. That looks about right. Push it a little further back. All right, let's compare that to the picture. Okay, so there we go. So now that we have the wings, this is the entire plane. And the next thing we'll do is we'll add engines. So that's part of the next video tutorial.